Hello and welcome to a 1v1 cast on Quest Heresy. Starting off at the bottom side of the map we have Bulbous playing as the Apothecary and on the top side of the map we have Paper Bag playing as the War Boss. This is patch 2.5. Scout's going in for some early power here in the mid along with the Apo capturing the natural power as well. Some Slugger's going to go for the requisition point instead and also the War Boss capping some power and some Shield Boy is going to rush towards that VP. Probably going to be a bit quicker than these tacks who look like they might also be rushing for the VP as well. Early power here for Bulbus, but no power node yet. He can't afford one because he's actually gone double scouts. Meanwhile, paper bag going for double shooters, double shooters, and sluggers is cheaper than double scouts and tacks, so he's able to get his power node out a little bit quicker. Now the Apo does actually struggle, I think, against the Warboss in the early game just because Warboss is a very tanky hero. The Apo doesn't actually do much damage with his default weapon and has actually not got much health either, only 600. But his tactical greens should be very nicely supported here with the heal. Ideally you want to use the heal on attacks rather than your Apo in the engagements as much as possible. You want to try and keep your Apo even in the back line and let your tanks be the ones to absorb the damage because the heal is more effective against well, he was more effective on them, and some tax forcing melee onto these shooters along the Apo, tying up the secondary squad, some nice use there, will bleed two models here, but the war boss is just going to be sitting on these tactical marines, do have some sluggers coming in as well, sluggers going to actually go for these tactical marines as well, heal is used there, but these tactical marines just taking too much damage, and there is nothing really, okay, some shotgun upgrade coming in onto these scouts will be enough to shotgun blast the war boss, but a tactical marine will actually go down here for a bulbous. And that's fine because you can always get a drop pod later on and reinforce the model that was lost to save money and also get a secondary tactical marine squad out. And scouts are actually going to leave the fight here. <laughs> They're actually going to go for the VP by the looks of things. And the Apo is left to fight along the attacks here. But the Apo not doing too much damage with that default weapon. And the Warbus doing more damage than the Apo. In fact, the Apo is actually taking a lot of damage. The Apo will actually get crushed there by the Warbus. Warbus doing a lot more damage in melee compared to the Apo and also being a lot more tankier as well at 920 HP against the Apo's 600 and also having the Shield Boy support as well. Shield Boy is doing a lot more damage compared to just two tactical marine models. Scout is going to be going away and Bulbs is in control of a good portion of the map right now. In fact, Paper Bag is only down to just the two power nodes and requisition. Meanwhile, Bulbus is on a triple cap right now on control of two requisition points, two power nodes. In fact, make that three requisition points. But I don't think this requisition point will last too long now. Stormboy is coming out for a paper bag. Hasn't actually seen any devastators yet. But Stormboy is actually an extremely annoying unit for Space Marines to handle since they don't actually have a melee unit in tier 1 that can really fight them. I mean, you can get some ASMs, but Stormboys do power melee, and Stormboys with hard boys or user choppers can be extremely dangerous to fight against, especially since. They'll be doing a lot of damage with power melee against heavy infantry. But something that the Apo can do, he can always get the purification rights. So if Stormboys try and jump on tactical marines, he can use the purification rights to get a knockback on the Stormboys and also Sluggers as well. While also dealing damage to them at the same time. Quite a bit of damage in fact. But we'll see later on hard boys that on Stormboys is very annoying for Space Marines to deal with. And some scouts going to shotgun blast that war boss, going to prevent him from capping this requisition point, or at least delay him from capping this requisition point. Some shooters coming in, those actually going to force these scouts away completely. Some sluggers are trying to bash this power node onto the left hand side. Some more shotgun scouts, though, so will come in and try and put a stop to that. These sluggers taking a lot of damage. Kraken rounds is activated, although not actually doing its extra damage to these sluggers since they're not heavy infantry. Shotgun blast will go off, but will actually fail to go. Or will fail to knock back these sluggers since they did retreat in time. Stormboys and Shoots is going to tear down this sensor power node as well. Still no generators here for Bulbus, and I think he should have maybe gone for some generators instead of the power nodes across the map. And gone for the power nodes later on when he had a bit of extra requisition free. We do actually have the purification vials though for the Apo. And purification vial does get thrown, does get dodged though by paper bag. And this Apo taking a lot of damage. We'll be able to retreat away to safe safety. These tactical marines though. Taking a lot of damage here, hard boys on these storm boys. These storm boys are actually very low. Some scouts will go down though in this engagement. Storm boys on two models, and these tactical marines also on two models will back away. Storm boys jump over that wall, go back to base, and probably reinforce as well. But Bulbus is now down a scout squad, and that will come in to play later on, or that will hurt later on. 
Gorbus just going around on the side, capping all the reposition points and DPs on the right hand side. Some sure boys also bashing the sensor power node or the natural power node, not the sensor power node. Gorbus will actually back away, he's not able to actually decap that fully matured requisition point. Some scouts look like they're a bit confused. They're actually going to go over to the right hand side VP and cap that since they can't actually fight these double shooter boys. They will actually melt these double shooter boys if they try and fight them, especially while out to cover. A drop pod is going to come in as well. But the shooter boys do retreat so they don't want to get hit. But that drop pod does actually do a little bit of damage. And that tactical marine squad on two models will actually get reinforced now. And double tax here for Bulbus, but no other units on the horizon yet. Some sluggers though on the side will actually finish bashing that power node which they started earlier. Double tax actually just moving up to try and bash a bit of power here. Cracking rounds activated again but I don't think it does extra damage to power nodes since power nodes are their own arm, they're not heavy infantry. And Stormboys jumping onto these scouts. I don't think shotgun blast is available otherwise he would have used it by now. Okay shotgun blast is available, do you see him knocking them back but scouts actually running back into these Stormboys will be forced to retreat away I'd imagine. Or they're just going to run all the way to base, but they might actually bleed a model here. When you see his double tax was getting forced away by the war bus by himself, and some shoe boys coming in from behind as well. These shoe boys are going to do a lot of damage. Stomp does go down, actually knocks the APO down to the ground. Scouts do bleed a model down here as well. The APO very low though, 80 HP, he does use the heal on himself, or is forced to use the heal on himself. Tactical Marines trying to focus down that war bus, but that war bus is just tanky, doesn't actually have any war gear yet. Those are very tanky. The storm boys that were chasing those scouts retreating through the center as well. And Warbus forced away these double tacks. Could actually just force melee on these double shooters and actually win the engagement. Do need to be careful though because there are some sluggers coming in towards this fight. Don't actually have their burners but they are still very scary even without their burners against these double tacks. And shield boys trying to kite as much as they can. Trying to wait for these slugger boys to actually get in. And tacks are just going to now force melee onto these shooters. In fact the tacks could win this engagement here. If both these tacks force melee onto these sluggers, they could actually win. But the tactical marine squad here is going to retreat away. And it looks like Bulbus will win this engagement without bleeding a single model of his own and while bleeding a lot of shooter models. And in fact, these sluggers are in risk of bleeding the extra models as well. And the space marine, you just want to bleed as many models as you can without losing as without losing any models yourself and now hard boys onto these sluggers that's going to be a very difficult fight now for bulbs to win shotgun blast though will make things much easier and turn things in his favor and he's now going to go decap this requisition points and vp this one remains neutral but the war bus is on his way to so change that and the army now for a paper bag just moving towards the center of the map meanwhile the apo very low here on 227 hp does need to be a bit careful about where he goes he does actually have enough energy for a heal by the looks of things could throw a purification valve here to deny paper bag from actually using this path. And it looks like that's what he's going to do. In fact, that sure boy squad getting forced away straight away. Taking a lot of damage from that purification valve, but it looks like the squad will live overall. They're very close to base and very close to some heals. We do actually have a tactical marine sergeant here to lead them. We also have a storm boy knob leader as well. So the storm boys will now stun when they jump in. The attacks actually losing all their models except for one, so it's a good thing he did get a sergeant, otherwise that would have been a squad wipe for him, but still an expensive loss to lose three tactical marine models though. The storm boys though, could actually fight this if they actually land a stun on both armies, or both squads even. Storm boys will jump in here, we do actually have a split from Bulbas, the shotgun scouts remain unstunned, hard boys as well, getting used, I don't think he has enough red to use, use the choppers, and the tactical marines will be backing away, the storm boys now going to jump onto these scouts. We also have the war truck coming in as well, for a paper bag, I think that is actually loaded up right now, in fact some sluggers just got out to go and camp that rune. At requisition point in the center, the APO on the side, still capping. Stormboy is going to jump in once again. We'll actually miss the stun though. In fact, I actually thought that stun might have landed. These tactical marines will just be fighting these Stormboys, but Stormboys with their power melee though is just going to be doing so much damage. Even with the tactical marine sergeant, it's not going to be enough unless you actually have They Shall Know No Fear to get the 50% special chance or the 50% knockdown chance. This APO is in very risky territory right now. It's taking a lot of damage. In fact, he will just go down here. It was very risky for him to jump in here. We do actually have a nice sync cure. Apo getting tossed there after that war bus cuts him with it, a chain axe. And some war truck is going to be driving through mid. 431 VPs to 341. Bulbus is in the lead. In fact, he actually repurchases Apo straight away with Laraman's blessing. 
and some scouts here will die. In fact, he brought them so back so quickly. The Apo hasn't actually had time to heal up to full health. Always normally would be full health. Do have a purification bar getting thrown to the ground. The sluggers will just get inside that truck though to avoid it. Looks like they did avoid it. And a dreadnought is also going to be coming out for Bulbous. Paper bag doesn't actually have anything to deal with a dreadnought as such right now. It does actually have the war boss. But he's not armed with a power core. He does have Storm Boys with a knob leader who does actually do heavy melee damage. And this generator is actually going to live because some scouts are repairing it. But this war truck might actually bleed a scout model hit. And tactical marines coming in. There's actually no AV for a Bulbous either, but the war truck isn't actually doing too much damage. But it's the reinforcement you actually want to kill it. So we could actually see a multi melter on this dreadnought to try and fight the war truck, or we could see some missile launches on these tactical marines, or we could even see some devastators later in. We actually has enough power now. Dreadnought coming in. Stormboy is not going to be jumping in. They do not want a piece of this melee dreadnought right now. And some sure boys also gonna be backing away the APO onto the side. Doesn't need to be careful. Re can't 1v1 that war bus, especially without any war gear purchases or without any armor or weapon upgrades. We also have some shooters just protecting that VP and paper bag is in control of a lot of the map right now. In fact, most of the map is red. Bulbus doesn't actually have any requisition points on the map right now. He does he has a single VP and his natural power, and that is pretty much it right there. Or boss being very annoying. He's actually going to try and finish off that generator that he tried to kill earlier, but was actually failed to do so. Taking a lot of damage for it, but the Warboss should be able to get out of there just fine. The Dreadnought though is on the retreat path and could actually finish him off. Tactical Marines could also try and force melee, but they do need to back away because the Sluggers coming in with Hard Boys and it's going to be doing so much damage. A heal does come in, could actually see a shotgun blast. They actually have a purification bar. Purification bar will actually miss. And this APO now in risk of dying, in fact, he's taking so much damage that Snob Leader is just doing so much the APO will go down. I think this is the third time the APO has actually gone down. But we could actually see another Laraman's Blessing come in. He's actually 25 red away from Laraman's Blessing, so we'll see. And still, there's nothing to actually answer this Dreadnought here through a paper bag. Could get some looters with the Beamy Death Gun, could even get some Tank Busters later on as well, or just Tank Busters to counter. He does actually have enough requisition for Tank Busters. But he also has enough money for beamy looters as well. Beamy looters will actually do a bit more damage. They do require to be set up instead. But some tactical marines are going to force away some shooter boys here, a paper bag, and paper bag is now tier 3. In fact, he could actually just get a looter tank to deal with this dreadnought. It does actually have enough resources for a looter tank, in fact. And a looter tank will just be able to kite this dreadnought around throughout the game. Dreadnought has already taken down one generator, now trying to melee down a second generator. This war truck still going around, being very annoying, only loaded up with shooters by the looks of it. In fact, actually, the sluggers are definitely loaded up inside that truck, I can't find them on the map right now. And Paper Bag is actually going to go for a knob squad, and I'm not sure about a knob squad against a melee Dreadnought. The knob squad should be able to win if it's fully upgraded. Bay Looter Tank will have a much nicer job of just kiting it around. Tactical Marines actually going to cap this VP. They shall know no fear is activated, and you can see that 50% chance to knock down units as well, being very annoying. Some boys do actually land special, but still, the damage reduction and the melee specials though of this Tactical Marine squad is just making them win this fight so easily. Along with the second Tactical Marine squad helping them out, now they're going to jump onto the secondary squad. They've had enough fights in it. Except for this squad is actually also got they shall no fear activated now and this Stormboy squad should probably just leave the engagement. They're actually going to lose this if they're not careful. They do have user choppers but it's not going to be enough. In fact the specials are really coming in handy here and that Stormboy squad will actually go down in fact. Two tactical marines in melee. We also have a shooter boy squad over here at the same time dying to a purification vial and a dreadnought on retreat. And that's two squads down for paper bag. We do have the knobs out there inside this war truck right now. You can see this tactical marines getting four stuff. I can't tell if these knobs actually have upgrades or not since I can't select them while they're inside the truck. But when they do jump out, I will be able to tell. Some sure boys are going to go to the right hand side. Paper bag still in control of the majority of the map right now, but is actually behind in VPs. This dreadnought is just causing so much trouble for him. In fact, knobs do get out. They do have a knob leader. I don't think they have their frenzy though, and they don't actually have their huge hammers either. Emperor's Fist though is going to stun them. We do have purification while <laughs> going thrown there, but the Apo will go down because of it. We could see him just purchase himself once again with Laram's Blessing knobs with Hard Boys activated. Unable to fight this Dreadnought in melee, the Dreadnought does actually have melee resistance, and with Emperor's Fist it does mean that they are able to win. Nob, so with the upgrades, with the huge hammers, and with the frenzy, we'll be able to win the fight. In fact, actually, they look like they will win this fight still with hard boys activated. 
with some shotgun scouts. You should be able to knock them back. Nobs are reinforcing on the field as well with that war truck on the field. And Nobs will have to back away ultimately. We could even see these tactical marines upgrade to plasma guns. In fact, he's actually upgrading to stern guards, which is quite odd to see this late in the game. Stern guards will. Normally you see stand guards upgraded on tactical marines that are still level 1, these tactical marines nearly level 3. Might not be worth upgrading stand guards, might be just worth it to get a plasma gun to help fight these knobs in me when the dreadnought fights in melee combat. But stand guards do have access to kraken rounds which is effective against heavy infantry which what knobs are. So we can see that come in, purification bar getting thrown down and Paperback is not paying attention to his shoe boys, in fact they will go down if he is not careful, they do actually have a knob leader though so they are a bit tankier, they are running away but there's Dreadnought here and there's some tactical marines and some stand guards here that is going to actually be enough to finish them off completely and Paperback is now down to just sluggers, knobs and a war truck, does also have the war boss with a power claw but the power claw isn't going to be doing too much to this dreadnought with melee resistance. Actually, it'll be able to do quite decently against the dreadnought, but if you put hard boys on your warbus, it'll actually be quite scary for the dreadnought to fight when it's on 583 HP. Now, the war truck is loaded up. Knobs coming out of this war truck. This dreadnought needs to be very careful. In fact, the dreadnought could go down here if the knobs do focus it down. Do actually have the sergeant still on these knobs? They should know no fear is activated once again, but it's just a bit too much melee here. In fact, that war truck could go down. Looks like Dreadnought is focusing down Emperor's Fist, though. It will protect these tactical marines running away. In fact, that dr war truck will go down. The Dreadnought will fist it in the rear. And the knobs are going to jump onto this Dreadnought. Stone guards can't really do much to protect this Dreadnought. Emperor's Fist on cooldown as well, so there's nothing to stop these knobs. Some shotgun scouts need to get here now and shotgun blast these knobs away from the Dreadnought and protect it. The Dreadnought is actually stopping on the path, and the knobs look like they will finish it off. And with that without that Dreadnought. Bulbus doesn't really have anything to answer these knobs other than to try and kite with tactical marines, but tactical marines are not going to be able to kite knobs for too long before you're back in base. But paper bag also down to just two units, just down to sluggers and knobs, or also his commander as well. And we do see him gain a second war truck. I'm surprised he didn't get the loot tank earlier though. He would have had a much easier time to kite that Dreadnought, but knobs is working out for him in the end. Level one, nearly level two in fact and 354 VPs to 293, both players just kind of down to not really much, in fact, both players on only about 50 population each, which is quite a lot considering they don't actually have that many squads each, I guess. Second war truck coming out soon, Bulbus is tier 3, and it looks like his purchase is going to be a Predator, which will be a good purchase. I thought he might actually be getting Terminators given the red and given the amount of requisition he had saved up. But I don't think Terminators would have been a very good choice against a very melee heavy army of paper bag. If you had access to the Assault Terminators as a Force Commander, I would say yes. But regular Terminators with their Storm Bolters and Power Fists is just not going to cut it against knobs and sluggers. And knobs actually jumping out of this truck, this Apo could be in trouble here. He's level 3, does have 660 HP, which is a bit more than the 600 starting HP. It does actually run around here, so he actually gets a nice retreat path. But you see how much damage he's taken from these knobs with their chain axes. It's just insane. So you need to make sure you pick your retreat paths wisely, or try and pick your retreat paths wisely. You don't always get a choice, and the game will sometimes screw you over like that. Some tactical marines just going to cap that requisition point while this war boss is tearing up the stern guard veteran squad. Predator is out on the field now, and Predator will be able to kite around this melee army of paper bag, and Predator will also be a really nice choice against this war truck that paper bag just picks up. But you really don't want the war boss to actually be clawing your Predator. Look how much damage he's done with just two hits. Predator doesn't have melee resistance. So we'll take full damage from melee. Some scouts actually take a lot of damage here from these sluggers. Sluggers will be knob leader. Level 3 in fact. Coming in close to level 4. And knobs coming in. You need to be careful. This predator is going to get path blocked by stern guard veterans if not careful. Mina and Greener is now on the field. Frenzy ability for these knobs will allow them to be damage immune for quite some time. This predator on 50 HP. One swing is going to be enough to kill it and it's going to go down that predator was very short lived here for a Bulbus and he does actually have enough resources soon to buy another Predator, he does actually have enough resources now to buy a Predator so we can see if he's going to get a second Predator this time he needs to make sure that he keeps it alive and keeps it away from these knobs and even get a Devastator squad so you keep behind your Predator just to suppress these knobs when they try and charge in for your Predator just to just anything to support your Predator really or even keep these scouts nearby for the shotgun blast to suppress these knobs as well 
anything to suppress these knobs, slow them down and allow your predator to kite them safely in sack. Stormboy's getting purchased here for paper bag, which is kind of an interesting purchase this late in the game. I think he wants these Stormboys in case there's a second Predator so that he can actually jump onto the Predator or jump behind the Predator with the Stormboy since the Knob Leader does do heavy melee. But I think a Looter Tank or even Commandos would be a much better choice. Commandos can actually go around the map, sneakily cap, and you can also get the Commando Knob Leader as well which is armed with a missile launcher which is actually buffed in this patch and will be effective against a secondary Predator which is actually being built here for Bulbas. Some sluggers go going to be jumping on these tactical marines here. Purification Vial, gain thrown, but the Purification Vial isn't even too much damage this late in the game. It's actually doing okay against these sluggers, but might be time to swap the Purification Vials out for the advanced medical equipment or even for the Purification Rites, which actually knocks back units around the unit that gets healed. So second Predator coming out for a Bulbas this time. The Predator needs to keep a safe distance away from these knobs. Keep a safe distance away from the Warboss as well who's also in heavy melee and try not to let the Storm Boys get too good of a flank or try not to let the Storm Boys path block the Predator when trying to run away here. But in fact it looks like Bulbas could actually go for a Predator, a third Predator if the game continues on long enough. 262 VPs, 286 Paper Bag is finally in the lead in terms of VPs now but not by much right now. He was behind for, in fact, the majority of this game. Preds are taking a few attacks here from the Warbus. Needs to get repaired up by some scouts and could even get a secondary pair of scouts if he is floating more requisition and power. This late in the game, just some extra scouts for some extra repairs and then buy the Predator afterwards as well. So the Storm Boy is going to be backing away here. Some scouts onto the side. Really need some scouts to repair this Predator though. It's only on 500 HP right now and we did see the previous Predator actually go down. And some tank buses are also on the field for paper bag right now. Secondary, a third war truck in fact is actually being purchased as well. Definitely need to keep your scouts next to the Predator and let your tanks go on the side and cap. Even though they're slower, they can decap quicker. But the Predator needs as much support as possible, needs all the love in the world to actually kite the enemy units. And some sluggers actually just going to go and cap. The shotgun scouts not doing too much damage here on the side, but the Predator is also here. Shotgun blast as well. Going to knock back these sluggers, going to force them away. And the scouts going to have to cap. They can't repair the Predator. They Predator as much as it needs repairs. They also need to cap that VP as well. A poker maybe force paper bag to not use this route by throwing purification vials since it does stay on the ground. Knobs will walk over it though because they don't really care since they have such a high health pool. All units could get inside the war truck actually and just drive across the purification vial on the ground. Predator might be able to snipe this war truck but does need to be careful though because there's a lot of heavy melee on the field right now in the form of knobs. The war bus himself who's actually armed with the heavy armor as well which you don't actually see too often. Heavy armor boosts the war boss's health by 900. It's a very expensive war gear. It is tier 3. I think it costs 60 power, in fact, in tier 3. The Tascal Marine Sergeant here gains sniped by that war bus with the power core. Tank busters could actually go down here. Killing these tank busters would be very nice for Bulbus right now, but he still needs to be careful of the amounts of heavy melee on the field right now. His Predator is gained very deep into enemy territory. If it gets a. In the paper bag is able to get a nice flank here, it could actually spell the end of this Predator. Tank busters do go down. War truck, I think, is loaded with. Actually, no, knobs are down here, capping the VP, so there's no chance of a flank, and Bulbas might know this. But still, tactical marines should go onto the side and do some capping, and scouts really need to repair this predator. I'm a bit scared of this predator, in fact, going down. Do you actually have a second predator or a third predator in the way since the first predator was already out in the field and died? So, a third predator here for Bulbas. Does also have the economy to, in fact, buy a fourth one later on if the game allows it as in if the game lasts long enough to allow it. 238 VPs to 192, Bulbas ahead in the VP lead. Once again, Paper Bag has been down on VPs for the majority of the game, only had a short burst of where he was ahead. And this second Predator could be a lot of trouble for the heavy, well, for the mass melee army of Paper Bag. He is getting a looter tank out, and looter tank will be a nice choice, but Predators, or two Predators at the same time, will be able to kill that loose tank and loose tank only has sluggers as repair support. Although then these predators only have a single scout squad as support so it's kind of even. Purification bar again thrown onto these sluggers taking a lot of damage but the warbus coming in here is gonna get some rear armor hits with that power claw. And it's doing a lot of damage. You can even use use your choppers onto the warbus for the extra damage as well. Second predator out on the field and this warboss is very angry and wants to chase down this predator. Predator looks like it's actually getting stuck here and the warboss is also gaining 
pushed aside because of half in the game. The Predator is actually getting a nice reverse pass now, but it actually pushes forward. I don't think you can reverse through this little gap here. And the Warboss isn't moving also this Predator. This Predator could just go down, in fact. 138 VP. No hard boys onto this Warboss. If hard boys was used, Warboss might be able to kill that Predator. He might be able to stay in the fight long enough. Tactical Marines, though, in mid, taking a lot of damage from these Storm Boys. User Choppers is activated on them. This Lua Tank could in fact drive forward and try and kill this Predator, it's on 148 HP, it does have the improved armor plating and is level 2, but it's just so low right now. The second Predator, or the third Predator in fact, is actually getting the improved armor plating as well. And Bulbus does look like he actually has enough resources very soon, another 10 more power and then he'll actually have a fourth Predator on the way, or a third Predator since the first one is currently dead. The 238 VPs to 95 paper bag still behind on VPs. Bulbus actually has a nice VP lead right now. Some sluggers though on the way to try and shut down this contested VP side. Some scouts hit. We need to repair this predator. This predator is moving forward as well. Could even see him upgrade to twin last cannon as well. But now, but there's a looser tank on the field. And twin last cannon actually does okay against infantry. I've seen him snipe some models and do some nasty damage to infantry when he actually lands a shot. But these knobs go gain a few swings. They do actually have their huge hammers, so we do see them gain some momentum, the orange rings around them. The Predators look like they're going to path block each other. Ooh, the Predator looks like it will go down here. One more hit, one more swing on the rear armor, and it will go down. Predator is trying to do what it can. Shotgun Blast needs to get used here on these scouts. Shotgun Blast needs to get these knobs away. Shotgun Blast is not going off right now. The second Predator very low. The Shotgun Blast does come in, but it's a bit too late. I don't know if it was on cooldown or not, but it really needs to come in a bit earlier, or this Predator needs to move instead of actually sitting there. That was a big loss. That was a level 2 Predator as well for Bulbas. He does actually have enough resources to buy another Predator and he really needs to keep this next Predator alive. Some more Slugs coming out as well, presumably for repair support, so these level 4 Sluggers could actually remain side capping and fighting for Paper Bag. Paper Bag is in control so much on the map right now, he can actually afford to buy whatever he wants. We actually have Terminators coming in. I think Terminators is a really big mistake here for Bulbas. There's a Predator on the field and there's so much melee on the field. And ter these Terminators are not really equipped to deal with vehicles or mass melee armies, or not heavy infantry mass melee armies. If it was a army of homogons and just sluggers or something light melee, you can get heavy flamer and stop everything from coming in by using the holy ground. But these predators are not going to be equipped to take on knobs, a warbus with a power claw and heavy armor or a looter tank. Maybe if you get a decent cyclone missile launcher at Barrage, you can kill the looter tank, but it's very reliant on landing it perfectly. And some sluggers just going to remain on this VP. Paper bag will pull ahead in VPs now as a 2 to 1 cap is active. In fact, he could actually push further forward, and I think he could cap this. This Predator, though, is just going in very aggressively. He's trying to snipe this Predator, but knobs are just getting surround on it, and he's going to throw away this Predator. He's just... That's the third Predator that's going to get thrown away, and Storm Boys will stun these Terminators. The Storm Boys actually going to work out much better than initially planned using their stun against Terminators. And Bulbus calls GG here 120 VPs to 83, but Bulbus will concede the game, losing all these Predators, losing Tactical Marines in the center as well, losing Standguard Veterans. It's just going to be a bit too much, and these Terminators are not going to be able to do a good job against the army composition of Paper Bag, and Paper Bag will be able to pull in a victory after being behind on VPs for the vast majority of the game.